What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here, coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Today, we are going to talk about how to stop worrying about the market and start winning in any market. It's so easy when the pipeline starts to dry up and when there's more month at the end of the money and all the bills are stacking up and the bank accounts drying up to start to worry. Is it not? Welcome to the front lines of being human. That is our proclivity as human beings is to worry because when there's something that feels like it's going the wrong direction, like our bank account, like our livelihood, like our future and the certainty around our future and our freedom and our ability to feed the family, we have all a matter of valid reasons why we would fret and worry and be anxious and have sleepless nights. That's just normal. That's just called being human. That being said, this conversation was prompted because I actually had a conversation with one of my uh, clients about a week, week and a half ago, and she had been out of the fold for a little while. She had been uh, you know, tr doing her best to apply the coaching and apply the principles that we teach, but she kind of fell off the wagon a little bit and she lost contact with the ethos and the coaching and the support and the accountability. It's like when you're inside of a fire, You've got the red hot embers, right? Those white hot, red hot embers in the middle of that fire. But what happens when you take the embers outside of the middle of the fire? They start to dampen in their heat. They start to dim, right? They start to go out. So same thing happened with this beautiful lady that I've had the privilege to serve. And so she started to wane in her commitment to the daily discipline. She started to get caught up in the fog of all kinds of stinking thinking, excusitis and fear that was cropping up just because of the market she's facing and the fact that her pipeline was drying up as her disciplines were waning. And so she was facing the obstacles of resistance and resignation from realtors. They were not giving her their time of day. She was not applying the coaching the way she would had she been on the coaching calls on a weekly basis. And so what happened was she started to see the market as bigger than herself and a formidable mountain that she could not overcome such that she started to gripe and complain about the market. Perhaps you can relate, right? She was complaining about the fact that buyers are getting priced out of the market. Refis obviously have dried up, dried up moons ago now. And her pipeline was still rather anemic. Her and her team were struggling to keep the lights on financially. And she was just in this griping, moaning, sibling, complaining, fretting mode that was very valid for her situation. And so she brought that to the table and I did my best to empathize and to compassionately care for her concerns and really connect to her plight. I certainly was feeling her pain. And at the same time, I told her what she needed to hear, not what she wanted to hear. And that is, as long as you complain about the market, you're giving your power away because we can't control the market. We can only control things inside of our control, namely our thoughts, our emotions, our actions, our self-talk, our disciplines, and our behavior. We can't control anything outside of that. So I brought her back into what she can actually grab the helm on and take control of. And from that place, she can now steer her course into a direction that she wants to go, which is building her pipeline in the face of hyper competition, margin compression, rising rates, refis drying up, and everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors that she can grow her business even in spite of the fact that it is not a growing market right now, in spite of the fact that her competition is dropping like flies. So that was the inspiration behind the conversation is to get you back to peace. If you've been in worry, to get you back into peace because your peace is your power. You do your best work when you're in peace.
True or not true? Not when you're fretting and freaking out, but when you're in serenity. So I want to give you some hangers, some access points to get back into serenity if you've been in stress mode, freak out mode, how to get back to your power and to be able to come back to that center point, coming back to center where you're anchored to peace, where you're poised, where you're creative, where you're innovative, and you do your best work. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I have a feeling someone needs to hear this. So let's dive in, shall we? The first step I want to walk you through in how to stop worrying and start winning in any market is stop trying to control what's outside of your control. I don't know about you, but I tend to have a very strong gravity to wanting to control things outside of my control, namely my kids' behavior, my wife's behavior, uh, the market conditions, you know, all these things that I'm grasping to control that are outside of my control. And if you hadn't noticed by now, the human domain of control is relatively small, right? I mean, in the grand scope of things, we really don't have that much that we're actually really in control of. And yet, what happens is we start to grasp for these things that are outside of our control, like when a rate's going to go down again, outside of our control. When is inflation going to go down again, outside of our control? When is pricing going to be better? Primarily outside of our control, right? So these things that we're holding our breath for or waiting for, or we feel that our success is contingent upon, most of those things. Unfortunately, if we allow ourselves to get into the weeds with our thinking, those things are outside of our control. And the classic quintessential symptom of that is what? It's stress, right? It's worry. It's sleepless nights. And all of a sudden, we start to contract. We tend to, tur we tend to turtle. It's the fight or flight mode. Our amygdala, that part of the brain that is the self-protective part of the brain, instinctually that we inherited from our ancestry when you know there were predators that were out to eat us while we're sleeping that instinct of self-preservation comes on strong does it not and so if we don't pull back the reins and guard ourselves against that proclivity it's going to cause us to contract to turtle and to get into massive stress mode. And it's like the classic quote from Kennedy, Robert Kennedy. He said, the thing to fear, the only thing to fear is fear itself. I might be getting the uh, person that is attributed to that brilliant quote wrong. It may be Roosevelt, but the big idea is the only thing to fear is fear itself because fear is the fire that will take the building if we allow that fire to fester. I'm right now in the middle of a massive wildfire, uh, unprecedented wildfire blitz in British Columbia. Uh, we are in wildfire, wildfire country here. It's been unprecedented, the amount of wildfires in British Columbia this year. Never have we seen the destruction. There's over 35,000 people who have been evacuated from their homes and uh, hundreds and hundreds of people lost their homes or had their homes damaged due to wildfires. So I'm thinking about fire naturally because it's been a crazy season of wildfires with all the droughts and the heat. And that being said, you want to think of fear in a similar notion that fear is a good thing if you're on the edge of a cliff. And you're looking down, that's a healthy fear. You don't want to jump or get too close to the edge of that cliff. You might fall off the cliff. So that's a good, healthy fear, right? We want to have that feel, fear. That's a faculty God gave us to stay alive and to fulfill our purpose here on earth and not have a uh, premature exit. However, there's other types of fears that cause us to facilitate and perpetuate the problem, the very problem that we're worrying about. We actually perpetuate it and 
cause it to get worse just by virtue of focusing on that fear and the worst case scenario. So I want to give you some perspectives of some things I've seen after 18 years of coaching mortgage pros to success that I have a feeling will help you if you apply this to your thinking and to your perspective taking as it relates to the market. Because everyone seems to be asking, when are rates going to go down again? When are things going to get back to normal? And the truth is only God knows, right? We don't really know. We have pundits that will tell you, they give you their best educated guesses, but they're guesses at best. We don't really know. So what if you were to just surrender that question and say, hey, only God knows and focus on the real question, which is how can I win in any market? How can I take market share in any market? How can I grow my business in any market? Isn't that so much better of a question? To be able to win in any market, to prosper in any market, to thrive in any market, regardless of rates, inventory, inflation, and hyper competition. Isn't that a much more compelling and inspiring question to ask, as opposed to a question of how can I control what's outside of, I could, uh, what, outside of what I can control, which is rate, or to worry about it and wait for it and hold your breath until it gets back to the way you want it. And again, since it's outside of your control, holding your breath is a great way to be another casualty in this business. We've been seeing mortgage pros dropping like flies left, right, and center over the last two years. Why is that? Because a lot of them are unequipped and ill-equipped to be able to tackle these kind of market conditions and to be able to shift in the purchase market. Many of them are already back to selling solar or driving Uber or whatever job they had before nine to five prison. If you're still in the business full time, you're one of the rarities. There has been a massive purge just by virtue of the fact that most people have not figured out how to crack the code and pivot to the purchase market in expedited fashion, such that necessity required them to go back to the nine to five prison that they came from before. And that's a terrible thing because there's so much more freedom on this side. There's so much more potential for making the life of their dreams on this side to be able to do what they want, when they want, with whom they want, any time they want. There's so much more available on this side if they can just figure out how to shift their mindset and their marketing. So that's the first thing that you want to shift your perspective on is stop trying to control what's outside of your control. Now, let me show you something kind of interesting that I think you will find uh, helpful when it comes to relating this concept. So if you're watching this, there's a diagram behind me. And you can see here, there's uh, a picture of a human head. And outside of the profile of the human head is the stuff that's outside of your control. And then everything inside of the profile inside of the skull, if you will, is what's inside of your control. You can see there's a lot that's outside of your control, right? The opinion of others, the actions of others, the future, the past, what happens around you. Uh, I have to move my head to get things out of the way. It's really not easy, by the way, to do this because everything is in mirror form. So it's like all in opposites. So I'm still in practice. So bear with me. Uh, what other people think of us, the outcome of our efforts and how others take care of themselves. You notice all that stuff is outside of our control. And yet, what do we tend to lose sleep about, fret about, worry about? Usually it's that stuff that's outside of our control. As ludicrous as that sounds, that's our human proclivity. Now you can see there's also things inside of our control, right? So we got uh, the goals we set, thoughts, actions, boundaries, uh, what we give our energy to, our focus on, how we speak to ourselves, and how we handle challenges, right? How resourceful we are in the face of challenges, how peaceful we are in the face of challenges, whether we contract or expand in the face of challenges. So you can see that just by contrast of what's in your control and what's outside of your control, just seeing that lucid juxtaposition is empowering in and of itself because it brings us back to center, does it not? If you're anything like me, it's like, 
oh yeah, I need to loosen my grip on those things that I'm grasping for control of that I really have no control over. The market, the rates, other people's actions, other people's behavior, the future, the past. I have no control over any of that. I'm called to simply do my best with what I do have control over and surrender the rest. Surrender the rest is the key to that. Because if we don't surrender the rest, it's kind of like how they catch monkeys. How they catch monkeys in rudimentary, very remote parts of the Amazon is they will get a gourd and they will cut an opening at the top of that gourd called a calabash. And they tie it to a tree and they put fruit inside of the gourd. And then they wait for the monkey. And the monkey will smell the fruit. They climb up the tree. They stick their hand inside of the hole to grab the fruit. And then they will clench their fist inside of the gourd. And then they make the opening just small enough. So when they clench their fist to pull their fist outside of the gourd, they can't get their hand out because their hand gets wider when it's a clenched fist. And so by virtue of their attachment to the outcome, which is to eat the fruit, they are enslaved. They're a slave to their attachments. And like monkeys, we can become a slave to our attachments, to having it be easy, to having it be comfortable, to having it be the way it used to be, to having the income we once had, to have the pricing we once had, to have the rates we once had, to have the volume of transactions we once had, to have the borrower affordability we once had. We're a slave to being attached to those things outside of our control. And therefore we become shackled to our attachments. Like the monkey, the only pathway out is to surrender those attachments. When we surrender those attachments, now we can come into freedom. Now we can come back to peace. Now we can come back to resourcefulness and tap that innate ability to be innovative and creative in the face of the challenges and to turn those challenges into opportunities, to turn adversity into opportunity. And that's my goal for you guys is to build that muscle of turning adversity into opportunity by letting go of your attachments that are outside of your control. So you can now have open palms, open hearts, open eyes, to embrace what you can control, what you think about, what you feel, and what you do. Those are the only things you have that are inside of your control. You do your best and you surrender the rest. So that's the first step to winning in any market is stop trying to control what's outside of your control. Easier said than done, right? It takes a lot of trust. If you have a faith in God and a higher power, that's the access point for me personally to be able to let go of stress and striving and white knuckling and gritted teeth and to surrender is to surrender it to my higher power to God and say, God, I surrender it to you. Now, there's lots of different faiths. There's lots of different maps of the world. You need to find an access point to you where you can surrender and trust and come back to center, come back to peace. Because like, what, like I said before, your peace is your power. So that is the first step in the process. The next step now is focus on improving what you can control, which is namely your mindset and your marketing. Your mindset and your marketing. So your mindset and your marketing is just simply asking yourself, what do I feel right now? What am I feeling right now? Am I feeling afraid, scared, anxious, worried, overwhelmed? Just check in with what you're feeling. The key to shifting your emotional state if you're in a funk and you're in fret mode is not to ignore it. Don't put your head in the sand and ignore it, but acknowledge it and say, just tell yourself the truth. 
be vulnerable with yourself. I had the hardest time doing this for the longest time. I don't know if it's because of my nature or nurture, how I was raised or just how God wired me, but I'm a warrior, right? And I'm someone who just naturally wants to grind and get comfortable being uncomfortable and feel the discomfort and do it anyways. That's just the way I'm wired. So when I feel that discomfort, if I feel that fear, my instinct is just to put a callus on my soul and to pretend it's not there and just keep manning up, worrying up and keep on keeping on. I don't want to acknowledge it. I don't want to look at it. I just want to focus on what I want to accomplish and just keep grinding in the face of it. Those of you dudes that are listening and watching, perhaps you can relate to that. That's probably a pretty normal dude inclination is to warrior in the face of it and not acknowledge it. The problem with that is I would grind myself to the bone, to the point of burnout, exhaustion, and I was running on fumes and I didn't bring the best energy to my family. My family got my fumes, right? They got me being short with them. I would be snappy. I would be not my best self. They didn't get the best daddy, the best hubby. They got the burned out version of me that frankly, they deserve a whole lot better than that. So one of the problems with not acknowledging where we're at is that it perpetuates it. If you don't at least validate it and empathize with where you're at, you tend to perpetuate the same negativity. It gets to be a stuck energy. So then I'm stuck in this running from the bear guinea pig wheel. And I don't know any other way than to just run harder, to run harder and to grind more and that's not a fun way to live. It's not a fun person to live with either. My wife can attest to that. It's not fun to live with that kind of person because they don't have any space for any grace or any fun or any marinating in the joy of the journey. They're just in grind mode, running from the bear, not a fun place to live. So the first step to break free from that, to release yourself from the calabash, so to speak, is just to acknowledge, hey, I'm feeling X. Connect to the feeling. And then from there, you can just notice, oh, okay, what am I believing that has me feel that way? Well, I'm believing that my business is going to fall apart. I'm believing that I'm not going to be able to provide for my family. I'm believing that my value and my worth is in my performance. I'm believing that I don't have enough. I'm not good enough that I'm an imposter. There's this imposter syndrome, right? There's lots of beliefs that are under the ground that you don't see. You see the symptoms of that belief and the behavior, right? The sleepless nights, the grinding, the showing of the fangs, the burnout mode prison that we tend to put ourselves into if we're in that running from the bear uh, guinea pig wheel. We see the, the bitter fruit of it, but we don't think to look under the ground and identify the bitter root of it. And the truth is, until and unless we change the root, we're not going to change the fruit. Until and unless we change what's below the ground, we can't change what's above the ground. So I was running from the bear for quite some time just because I didn't bother to even consider that all momentum within is the precursor for momentum without. All breakthroughs that I want on the outside need to be fulfilled with a breakthrough on the inside. All breakthroughs on the outside must first be accomplished on the inside. I never thought about that before. So this is how we perpetuate the problem. This is, it's like Albert Einstein. He said, you can't solve the problem with the same mind that created it. Kind of a brilliant concept, right? Pretty smart dude. You can't solve the problem with the same mind that created it. You can't solve a fear problem by bringing a fear paradigm to the problem. 
You can only solve a fear problem by bringing a serenity or a peace paradigm, a trust paradigm, a surrender paradigm. Because as long as we're attached in fear and we're bringing judgment and we're bringing all a matter of that symptomatic cycle that comes from judgment, which again is that internal paradigm of fear, of judgment of the circumstance, judgment of self, and then what happens. Until and unless we break free from that attachment and that judgment, we are like the monkey that just clinches the, can- the fruit in the calabash all the longer and harder. We perpetuate the problem. We can't solve the problem with the same mind that created it. We got to get out of the monkey mind. And we've got to connect with the mastermind, the mind of the master, right? Got to connect with truth so that we can get into freedom. We can get out of forcing it and just get into that serenity place that comes from surrender by letting go. It's completely counterintuitive to the monkey to let go of that fruit. It wants that fruit. It's counterintuitive to let go. Likewise, it's completely counterintuitive to stop grinding and start trusting, and surrender, surrendering, right? And allowing and attracting. It's completely counterintuitive to think this adversity is actually opportunity. It's counterintuitive to think that you do your best work in the face of a market storm. It's counterintuitive to think that while everyone else is freaking out and your competition's dropping like flies, this is the time to do your best work and to take market share. It's counterintuitive to think that the more you just do your best and trust God with the rest, the more everything's going to fall into place in divine timing and divine order. That's counterintuitive. So notice the counterintuitive nature of things. And that's the shift you want to make in your mindset to focus more on what you can control. And the key is to get into that surrendered place where you can come back to center, come back to serenity, come back to trust, come back to faith, come back to peace. And then from that place, now you can be creative. You can't be creative when there's bombs dropping and you're down in the bunker. You can only be creative when you feel safe enough to come out of the bunker and to lie down in green pastures and be led by still waters and to have your soul restored, right? Psalm 23, those of you who know Psalm 23, you know, I'm alluding to that. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Notice how there's a fortress of peace there. There's a pasture of peace. You want to come back to that place. Now you can start to really concoct in the alchemy of your own soul solutions and to do your best work and to be creative and to have fun, even in the face of that storm. It's like, bring it on. This is the best time to fly my kite when it's stormy as hell and that wind is blowing, right? Without pressure, there is no diamond. Let me say that again. Without pressure, there are no diamonds. So what if you were to embrace that pressure as positive pressure that's forging your soul so you can do your best work, so you can become your best self, so you can live your best life? Strong timber does not grow with ease. The stronger the wind, the stronger the trees. I don't know who said that, but it's a pretty cool poem. And I believe it's very true if we'll embrace it. It's like Henry Ford, he said, Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. If you believe it's a bad time to buy right now, you're right. If you believe it's always a great time to build equity in your own home, to stop making your landlord rich, to stop giving your landlord the equity when you could be building equity in your own future, your own family's future for generational wealth for your future, 
and for your family's future. If you believe that it's always the best time to buy because it's always the best time to build equity in your own home and build generational wealth for your family's future, and you believe that there's always going to be transactions because there's always people getting into the market, moving up in the market, getting married, getting divorced, and dying, and all those require transactions. If you believe that, and I wholeheartedly do, and you believe that there's always going to be enough transactions to thrive in any market, if you'll just simply be able to crack the code on attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, so they send you all their business all the time, so you're building a rock solid foundation in the purchase market, which is least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. And you're partnering with the most successful realtors that have the lion's share of the clientele, the lion's share of the inventory, who again are least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. So you're hitching your wagon to successful agents. And as you help them succeed, you succeed. Perfect win-win. That rising tide raises all the boats. As you help them succeed, you succeed. It's very much in sync with that proverb that he who waters is himself watered, right? So the more you help them succeed, you succeed. So now you're building a recession-proof business. And every time rates go up, it's just positioning you to prosper even more when rates go down, when you can refinance those clients. So you're cool as a cucumber. You couldn't care less what's going on with the market. Screw the economy. You're creating your own economy. Who cares about what the market's doing? You're found, you found a way to navigate such that you win in any market. And that allows you now to do what your competition isn't doing, which is embracing the challenge. And instead of whining, simply complaining and griping about it, you're grateful for it. You're knowing that it's thinning the competition. You're knowing it's the survival of the fittest. And because you have the fittest mindset and you have the fittest marketing, you're going to be able to prosper and leave your competition in the dust. What's the best marketing and the best mindset? It's the one that allows you to do your best work in the purchase market. Believe that there's always enough deals believe that it's always the best time to buy, believe that the purchase market is the best way to build a recession-proof business, and believe that building your dream team of top producing realtors is the shortest path to the cash and the only true way to build sustainable business for your future. Not relying on refis, but relying on the purchase market. If you haven't figured that out by now over the last two years, I don't know what cave you just crawled out of, but anyone with two brain cells to rub together and a half an ounce of understanding of this business would know that the purchase market is the only solid foundation. Refis, that's walking on quicksand. It's walking on thin ice. You can't rely on that. You know that. I know that. So that's the second step in the process is focus on improving your mindset, having that growth mindset where every single day you're focusing on being the best version of yourself. You're coming back to peace. You're connecting to purpose to be light in the darkness for your partners, for your clients, to help them achieve their goals. The more you help them get what they want, the more you can have anything you want. Just like the late and great Ziggy Ziglar said, the more you can have anything you want in your life, the more you can have anything you want in their life. Pardon me. The more you can help other people get what they want in their life, the more you can have anything you want in your life. So coming back to that purpose to serve, to be light in the darkness. And then the marketing is very simple. Follow up with your clients, ask for referrals, remind them of the great rate you helped them get last year, the year before that, three years before that, ask for referrals and reach out to top producing realtors and show them how you can help them grow their business. Now, if you're like, Doran, I've tried that and they're slamming the door on my face because everyone and their dog is chasing after the same realtors. Well, you might want to book a call with us at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply because that just tells me there's a few missing links on your approach. And it's not your fault because chances are the approach that you got taught from your sales manager or from your the owner of your company, it doesn't work anymore. The stuff that worked 5, 10, 15 years ago, it just doesn't work anymore. 
and they can't give you that which they don't have. And that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com because this is not an easy code to crack. You can't just Google search it. And for almost two decades, we've been teaching mortgage pros how to crack the code when it comes to how to attract top-producing realtors to make either exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts. And so that is certainly a good reason for us to get on the phone and have a conversation to see if we might be the right fit to help you create a breakthrough in your business. Again, you can book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. If that sounds like it might be a relevant best next step for you, but let's continue because there's more here. The third step I want to share with you on how to win in any market, how to stop worrying and start winning in any market is as follows. Double down on your realtor attraction. Double down on your realtor attraction. Right now, if you don't have a database, there is nothing else to focus on. It's realtors, realtors, realtors. If you have a database, you could be getting reviews from them. Ask the people who give you a review for a referral. Who better to send you a referral than somebody just give you a five-star review, right? That's your brand ambassador in the making. If you have a database, let them know if you have the tools to do it like home equity or rather uh, uh, home bot or um, there's another one too. I think it's called uh, home IQ or something like that. There's different software services out there where you can actually, if you're in the U S you can find out what their equity is and you can send that data to your client and say, Hey, let's have a chat. Your equity is $455,000. Let's have a chat about how to best manage that equity. Now they, if they're in a healthy financial place, they'll say, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm sitting on this until rates go down. But if they're really in a shit storm financially, they might say, I had no idea I had that much equity. And I'm really freaking out with my finances right now. I'm up to my eyeballs in uh, bills I need to pay. I'm not getting by. I'm bleeding financially. I'm losing sleep. This would be a huge relief to me, even if I'm paying, you know, double the rate I did before, frankly, this would be a lifeline for me under these circumstances. You'd be surprised. You can get refinances just from the fact that you have this opportunity to have conversations with your clients and tell them about their home equity. So if you have a database, that's what you need to be doing. If you don't have a database, it's realtors, realtors, realtors. And so you need to have a method to be able to book appointments with realtors. You need to have an effective method. If your method's not working, we need to have a conversation because that just tells me you're doing it the hard way. And it's not an easy thing to figure out. Like we talked about, you can't just watch a free YouTube video, listen to a free podcast or read a free blog to figure this kind of stuff out. That's why we've been in business for two decades, but it needs to be what we call all cheese, no whiskers. Treat it kind of like catching a mouse. Mice love cheese. They hate whiskers. They know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? It's called a cat. So you want to give them all cheese, no whiskers. Give them what they want. Remove what they don't want, which is a sales pitch, a mortgage parasite, a loan leech who's just trying to leech loans from them. So one of the things we teach you at Planet Prosper here at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is how to do that, how to thread the needle on that, and to be able to articulate your unique value proposition with certainty, with confidence, with mojo, with swagger factor, so that you're attracting versus repelling. Because it doesn't matter how compelling your value proposition is. If you don't have a kick-ass value proposition with certainty, you're going to repel because they already have enough fear. They don't need yours, right? So the moment they feel any sneaking suspicion or vibration of fear, uncertainty, they're gonzo. That is whiskers to the nth degree. They're going to flee in a hurry. So the key to this is have the right words that work. That's all cheese, no whiskers, and also have the vibrational frequency of peace, certainty, confidence to be anchored to purpose that, Hey, I'm here to help you if we discern and decide we're the right fit. I'm here to help you grow your business if we discern and decide we have the right synergy and the right chemistry to work together. Notice that there's 
a certain air of exclusivity and the fact that they're not interviewing you, you're interviewing them, right? Notice the difference. There's a big difference in that energetic frequency. So that's the third step is you want to double down on realtor attraction. Make that your obsession, your magnificent, magnificent obsession every single day. And that obsession needs to be trackable, traceable. You need to be tracking. How many appointments are you booking? How many appointments have you done? How many of those have converted into partners? Start to gamify that process. One of the things we teach you on Planet Prosper is the two-phase approach, where instead of asking for marriage on the first date, you learn how to just book a, a good date and get really good at booking that first date. And then you get really good at eliciting trust and connection and synergy and sizzle on that first date, such that they're chomping at the bit for the second date. And next thing you know, it's a slippery slope where they're the one begging for the opportunity to partner with you. They're the one talking marriage, not you. So there's a process to that that tips the scales of fortune in your favor. You want to learn that process because if you don't, you're grinding up the hill with concrete blocks on your feet, doing it the hard way. And there's no brownie points. There's no merit badges at the bank for doing it the hard way, is there? So it's important to lock in on that formula because it's going to put a whole lot more zeros and commas in your bank account. So the big principle here, guys, is stop worrying about things outside of your control and just simply connect to what is in your control. Do your best and trust God with the rest. That's all you can do. The best you can do is the best you can do. Now, the cool thing is, is once you're coming to the gunfight with a tank instead of a butter knife, you're going to find the best you can do is a whole lot better than the butter knife, right? It's like, if you want to build the skyscraper of your dreams, you can either try to dig the hole underneath the skyscraper for your foundation with a gardening trowel, or you can roll out the excavator. Which one do you think is going to be more fun and more fruitful? You and I both know it's the excavator, right? So there is a working smarter path, and then there's a working harder path. We're big proponents here on Planet Prosper to working smarter versus just harder. So focus on what you can control, surrender the rest, trust God with the rest, and double down on improving your mindset and your marketing, double down on capturing more market share by becoming obsessed with and focusing like a laser beam on your metrics with getting appointments with top producing realtors. If you will obsess with that and measure your success against how many appointments have you booked with top producing realtors this week compared to last week, this month compared to last month, and you make that your magnificent obsession. And again, if we have a conversation and we discern and decide we're a good fit and you decide to upgrade from the gardening trowel or the shovel to the excavator, you're going to find that there is no other activity that's more profitable than getting top producing realtors in front of you, either through Zoom or face-to-face and converting them from just a first date conversation to getting them hook, line, and sinker as an exclusive VIP partner who sends you all their business. One of those partners can absolutely revolutionize your business. Think about it. You're one partner away from unleashing a massive influx of momentum, momentum, mojo, confidence, inspiration, motivation, and a cash injection into your business. Just one partner that sends you one, two, three deals. A month. Just one partner who believes in you. You believe in them. You love and adore them. They love and adore you. You've got that synergy that sparks fine synergy and chemistry that has them showing up to your barbecues and your birthday parties. Like they're a real cool cat that you really connect with and they really connect with you and they send you all their buyers all the time. They're a brand ambassador because you have that authentic synergy with you and you with them. You're just one of those partners away from creating massive momentum in your business. And here's the cool part. 
Just one of those partners can be worth 36,000, 50,000 plus per year. If you're getting one deal a month from them and you're making three G's a deal, that's $36,000 a year to you just from one partner. Now, once you attract one, then it's just a matter of rinse, wash, and repeat the process to get two. Once you get two, it's just a matter of rinse, wash, repeat to get three and so on. So you can get to whatever income level you want. Shortest path to the cash, whether it be half a million a year, three quarters of a million a year, even a million a year plus, just from getting a handful of these top producing realtors who send you one, two, three deals a month. Think about how elegantly simple that is. You don't have to be posting five posts a day on social media. You don't need any fancy funnels. You don't need to be you know, doing any fancy AI for any of that. Just simply getting solid partners in front of you, solid top producing realtors in front of you, having a process to get those first dates. And from those four first dates, if those meetings are well executed and well orchestrated, it's a slippery slope to have them falling in love with what you bring to the table. The fact that you're a go-giver versus a go-getter, the fact that you're bringing real value just versus just being a loan leech and a mortgage parasite. Next thing you know, it's like you've got a dream team of five, seven, 12 top producing realtors sending you all their business all the time. You know what that is? Making freedom money doing what you want, when you want, with whom you want, any time you want, to be able to make surgeon money on your terms and to be able to have your independence, your freedom with a thriving mortgage business that's least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most, to build a recession-proof business on a rock-solid foundation with some of the most successful realtors in your market and to help them win, win, help them thrive. And in doing so, you thrive. That's the win-win that we teach our clients how to create and to replicate and to be able to get those appointments almost at will. So if you're a 100% commission mortgage pro and you're in a place where you're struggling to get traction with realtors. You're struggling to overcome the fear, the anxiety, the worry. And you just notice that you've got so much potential locked up inside of you, but you're having a hard time tapping it. You've got all this horsepower. You're like a 500 horsepower Ferrari, but you're kind of stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on, stuck in first gear, half throttle, just kind of idling. And you're having a hard time having the rubber meet the road and getting past first gear, half throttle. If that's you and you're a 100% commission residential mortgage pro who does forward mortgages, not just reverse mortgages, and you want to increase your income by at least $100,000 or more in the next 12 months, in spite of the economy, in spite of rates, in spite of inflation, in spite of whatever your situation is with inventory, if that's you, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And that'll give you an opportunity to book a call with me or one of my consultants. We'll just simply get on the phone with you, have an honest conversation, and just have a real talk conversation about where you're at now, where you want to be, what's working, what's not working. If we can help you bridge that gap and create a breakthrough, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our proven system. If not, frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. But either way, our goal for you is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Sound good? So if that sounds meaning, meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So that's all I've got for you today, my friends. We just talked about how to stop worrying about the market and how to start winning in any market. I trust you got some insights and value from this today. Again, it's not about knowing it in your head that makes the difference. It's about knowing it in your heart, which means you need to bridge the gap between that which you know in your head to that which you know in your heart by doing it, by executing on it. Because until and unless you've executed on it, you just thought about it, wished about it, hoped about it, prayed about it. But until and unless you do about it, you're not going to see the results from it. So for that reason, I strongly encourage you to book a call, 
If you've not yet done so, so we can help you do about it, not just think about it, help you execute on it and help you take the shortest path to the cash to making freedom money in any market to winning in any market. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We will see you again on the next episode. Be blessed. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us.